Hey guys, so I have been doing quite a lot of testing on these light long range platforms with different prop sizes from 4 inch, 5 inch, 6 inch up to this 7 inch here. And I think these are now quite interesting to share and I'm really sort of looking forward to uh, also hear what you guys think about it in the comments. So before we dive into the topping sort of the results I found in my testing, um, I guess it makes sense to quickly take a second to explain um, what I mean when I'm talking about uh, disk load. All right, so uh, without going too deep into the specific theory, what I'm um, talking about when I'm referring to disk load is quite simply the uh, total area of the props. So the area that you have when the props uh, there's one full rotation multiplied by the number of uh, props you have. So four on a quad, obviously six on a hex. And then the all up weight divided by this, uh, by this area. So it's basically the all up weight. So the takeoff weight of, um, of the quadcopter with the battery divided by on a quad four times pi multiplied by R squared. This is the disk load. It's uh, measured in grams per centimeter square, for example. Now, this is an interesting metric because it does affect flight times quite a lot. So there is a sort of, just to illustrate this, there is a sort of uh, inverse relationship between the efficiency we have in grams of thrust I can generate for each watt of power I'm putting in. So a watt is one amp multiplied by the amount of volts. So um, the efficiency, and here we have on the other axis, the disk load. So the relation is something like this. So the more we decrease the disk load, if we move here um, on this axis, towards the center and reduce disk load, the more efficiency we get. So a low disk load will give us high efficiency, while a high disk load will give us a much lower efficiency. So we have this efficiency gap here. And as you see, this curve um, is not a straight line. So it's more than a proportional response. Um, we do actually get overproportional efficiency gains by reducing disk load. This is why it's um, pretty interesting for any long range platform. Another factor we need to take into account is that disk load also affects sort of how the quad feels. Low disk loads tend to make it uh, less locked in and more floaty, uh, while higher disk load tends to um, tends to help or there's a sort of let's say there's a sweet spot in terms of disk load which is for most people around five uh, you know a, a regular five inch quad with maybe a 500 gram uh, five to 600 gram takeoff weight that's sort of the sweet spot in terms of flight characteristics and flight feel but it's not um, the maximum efficiency that can be gained this one is way more um, towards lower disk load all right, so this principle of reducing disk load as much as possible is basically where um, the famous long flight times of these micro long range platforms here come from. So this Flywheel Explorer or the original micro long range or all the other uh, quads in that class do have relatively low uh, disk load. We have large four inch props on a pretty small motor. This reduces weight quite a lot. The motors are pretty much the biggest driver uh, regarding regarding the weight of the quad you have. Then it's a light frame, light micro components. We have also relatively low KV motors. That's another factor that doesn't play into weight, but it's another factor increasing efficiency. But overall, really a lot of the efficiency is coming from a relatively large prop already area in proportion to the weight of uh, such a quad. Now, the question I was asking myself is, can we take this even further? How much can we actually reduce this load? And how much of the, the efficiency gains and benefits we would expect do we actually see in uh, reality? 
So what I decided to do basically is to build the lightest seven inch platform I could possibly come up with. This is it. So what I did is um, I took my five inch mini long range platform and designed some seven inch arms here for this one. And then, you know, after I had the frame, it was quite simple. I just had to increase basically the size of these arms. Uh, what I had to figure out is what is the lightest motor that can still properly spin a seven inch prop. And by properly, I mean in a way that allows you to still get a decent tune and something, you know, that flies in a nice way in FPV. I mean, you could still use even smaller motors than these, but basically what happens is it's just wobbling around and you sort of get seasick. So what I was considering were um, 2004 motors, the Bravo Hobby LR 2004 motors, because Bravo Hobby actually has a uh, a seven inch platform with this motor that is supposed to fly on 2S, so really freaky concept, but look quite interesting. Now, um, I decided to not go for it because there weren't really many reviews or tests, and the only one I saw from Gal Kramer, who uh, who tested the platform actually, and sort of concluded that 2S isn't even enough to power it, and even on 4S, it's just basically impossible to properly tune it, and it's just wobbling around, so it's basically useless for our purposes of uh, flying FPV. So um, I moved up a notch and what I decided to go for are these uh, 2004, 2204 motors. So a wider stator compared to the 2004 um, and very low KV. So 1450 KV, it's kind of funny that uh, Diaton produces these motors. They are, they've been out for a while. Uh, the basic design for a toothpick. I don't know why they are so low KV. It's really low KV for five inch what they are designed for. But um, well, it's it's 22 fours, and these do indeed uh, work on this seven inch prop. You can uh, properly tune this to fly without wobbles. Uh, it's still sort of pretty floaty, uh, not super locked, and of course it really doesn't have a lot of power on this uh, forest pack, but it does actually work. It's sort of the lightest, um, lightest seven inch platform I could come up with that still cruises in a, in a nice and decent way. Okay, um, but now let's go back to some calculations. So how much disk load reduction did we actually gain by scaling, um, scaling up to seven inch? Because I mean, obviously we increased the disk load quite a lot, but also we increased the weight. Uh, it's really not possible to make a, um, you know, go from a four inch to a seven inch without massively increasing weight. You just need a minimum of frame stiffness to support these large props and not have any vibrations and so on. So uh, let's quickly look at the numbers maybe. All right, so let's compare these numbers. Now on the seven inch, we are looking at a total prop area of 993 centimeters squared and an all up weight of 480 grams, so it's uh, with a forest lithium iron pack, it's um, 280 grams dry on the four inch. In comparison, we are looking at a uh, disc area of 324 centimeters squared. So, right, you can see um, the disc area is basically three times as large on the seven inch compared to the four inch. And we are looking at an all of weight with exactly the same battery of 360 grams. The quad dry is around 160 grams. So um, what does that mean in terms of disc load? So the four inch does have a disc load of roughly 1.1 grams per centimeter squared. And the seven inch does have only 0.5 grams per centimeter squared of disc load. So this is roughly a reduction of minus 55% in terms of disc load. Now compared to the all up weight. So 
I mean, the disc load in principle is lower, but also we have to carry more weight, and that is an increase in weight from 480 grams is roughly plus 33%. So as you can see, we have a drastically reduced disc load. The seven inch basically just has half as much disc load while uh, being 33% heavier. Okay, so basically, um, I mean, that should mean that we have much longer flight times on the seven inch compared to the four inch, right? But actually from the testing I did so far, I have to say it is not that obvious. I mean, at least if they are using the same battery. Um, so far, it was not like it felt that the seven inch has, um, you know, massively longer flight time and it's, and it's a super obvious, um, obvious difference. But also these things are not that easy to compare if you're not doing a side-by-side -side comparison. Also the seven inch moves faster, so uh, the actual amount of, you know, watts pulled might not be the same. So I might just be moving faster with this quad. So what I think is interesting to do um, now in this video is to go out and try to do exactly the same with both quads. Cruise at exactly the same speed and see what flight times we get at a cruise at around 40 kilometers an hour and really try to be as consistent as possible. Another thing that uh, will be interesting is to see how the noise level is because both are actually pretty quiet but I feel the 7 inch might be even more quiet. This uh, in fact does really sound like a DJI Mavic if you ever heard one of them flying. It's a very very similar sound. So let's go out and let's do the comparison of um, the 4 inch versus the 7 inch with exactly the same battery and see um, if these you know theoretical assumptions about disk load actually translate to real world flight times. All right, so here we have a very big open field that should hopefully allow me to fly very consistently. Um, the quads are here, so this is the 7 inch 4S Lithium Ion Pack and the 4 inch the Flywheel Explorer with the Flywheel Pack. Now, these are the exact same batteries. Both have a VTC 6 Sony cells inside, so it will be very interesting to see now uh, which one is actually the most efficient running on this exact same battery, so which has the longer flight times. What I'm going to do is fly at exactly 40 kilometers an hour as consistently as I can, down to, I think, probably 3.3 uh, volts. I'm not going to go all the way down because this will take forever and <laughs> it's pretty cold outside. Um, so let's see what flight times we will get doing this test. All right, so what you're seeing here is the seven inch with, I mean, obviously an imperfect tune. That thing is uh, sort of wobbling, but um, it doesn't really matter for the purposes of the test. I didn't take too much time for tuning it. Well, and what I'm doing is just very boring, flying back and forth on the field, basically doing uh, the same lap over and over again, 40 kilometers an hour, sort of uh, control this with my uh, GPS. So back and forth, back and forth, until uh, finally I was landing at pretty exactly 3.3 volts. All right, so I'll probably spare you uh, from watching the entire footage. It is impressively boring, but the seven inch did in fact uh, hit 3.3 volts after 10 minutes and 10 seconds. So, um, I mean, obviously I could push this much further. You can push these uh, lithium ions down to 2.5 volts if you have to. Uh, also it's windy and cold. So I guess under ideal conditions in the summer, we're looking at more like 15 minutes at least uh, down to 3.3 volts. So probably a total flight time of uh, more than 25 minutes under ideal conditions. But today um, in this sort of real world testing in the cold, in the wind, we got uh, 10 minutes and 10 seconds down to 3.3 volts. And now, um, well, let's try the exact same thing down to 3.3 volts with the four inch and see if we get um, a different result. So same boring thing with the four inch. Um, just back and forth, back and forth on the field. Honestly, I don't know why uh, the coloring on this uh, DVR looks so much different than on the seven inch. Uh, it got a bit darker. It was maybe like a half an hour between both flights, but something seems a bit different. Although those are both uh, Cadex Vistas with the DJI cameras. I'm not sure why the footage looks different, but again, um, let's skip this because it's incredibly boring. 
All right, so I'm quite surprised, especially about how clear the results were, but the 4-inch just did 18 and a half minutes down to 3.3 volts. Honestly, I am not 100% sure what I'm going to conclude on those results. Uh, I guess I'll have to think about it on the way home. Uh, well, let's take this home and uh, sort of debrief on the results. Okay, so I have to say these were pretty interesting results. Now, I would have expected the 7-inch to at least um, have the same flight time compared to the 4-inch. Because, I mean, yes, it's 120 grams heavier, the all-up weight... But, I mean, as I already said, it just has half the disc load compared to the 4-inch. But the results we got were quite clear. So, basically, um, 10 minutes on the 7-inch and 18 minutes on the 5-inch, which I mean, still shows how, um, how impressive this 4-inch micro-long-range platform is when it comes to flight times. Now, on the other hand, I think we have to uh, take these results with a, uh, a grain of salt because, I mean, obviously... There are quite a lot of uh, factors that play into flight times. So um, the props are one factor here that um, might be interesting to look at. These might not be the most uh, efficient props for this configuration. There are some 7-inch um, T-mount prototypes around. I hope I can get a set uh, quite soon. But that's something uh, where I think a lot of the differences in flight time are coming from the props i'm not sure if the motors are actually totally optimal because i mean obviously i'm comparing the seven inch here to this four inch platform that has been optimized over the course of a year when it comes to motor size and kv and so on and this is basically just a first try on the seven inch but um i think still it's uh it's worth testing now the interesting thing i think about the seven inch is basically mostly the noise so with this very low um, disc load and these large props it does have a very interesting uh, audio profile so this basically sounds like a dji mavic also the noise level it's extremely quiet while of course the four inch does have a uh, higher pitched noise another factor we also should consider is that i mean obviously if i apply uh, so much battery on the 7 inch that it basically has the same uh, disc load as the uh, 4 inch. I could easily use a uh, 18650 4S2P pack, it would carry it without any issues, but then again, I would lose probably the low noise effect. What is maybe more interesting is trying a um, pack with uh, 21700 cells, so these are 4000 milliamp hours, but overall. I mean, just to wrap this up, I think the results show that it is not as simple as just uh, decreasing disk load and you're just going to get more efficiency in terms of uh, grams per watt you're producing. You're uh, making the frame heavier, which seems to counteract the uh, the efficiency gain. The overall quad gets heavier, although I, I mean, the all-up weight didn't change as much, 30% change in all-up weight. Uh, but obviously that wasn't compensated by the lower disc load on the 7 inch. We still have factors like the props and the motors playing into all of this. So it seems that for the moment, if you're looking just for extremely long flight times on a small and quiet platform, the 4 inch still seems to be um, the best best option at the moment. All right, guys. Um, so... Would be great if you uh, have any ideas on which direction to take this next and what to try or if you have any ideas um, what could affect the flight times here. Leave a comment. Let me know what you think. I think it's always very interesting to see uh, what sort of suggestions we have in the comments. And of course, I hope you enjoyed this video and don't forget to subscribe.